Hello friends, we just got back from a seven day cruise on the Princess Majestic. It was an Alaska cruise. My name is Lauren, this is my husband Mark, and we actually live in Anchorage, Alaska, and we share our life here on YouTube, <coughs> showing our shopping, what our life is like, cooking. We are a hunting and fishing family, so we love Alaska, and we decided to take an Alaska cruise because we wanted to be able to share it with our viewers, also, it's just a great way to explore the state that we live in. Alaska is huge, and so we figured that an Alaska cruise would get us to some towns that we are less likely to visit and be able to bring our viewers along. So in this video, we are going to talk about what it cost for our Alaska cruise, what was included, what was not included, excursions, things like that. We'll break down the whole cost for you, and then we'll answer some questions we got from our viewers about the cruise. First and foremost, did we enjoy the cruise? Got that question a lot. I thought the cruise was fabulous. And so if you don't know me, I'm, I would never have thought I was a cruise person. I'm an outdoors kind of person. I go hunting. I try and find places where there's no one else around in the wilderness. But that being said, I had a really, really good time with my wife for a whole week on the cruise. It was just wonderful being on a cruise where you're like moving from one location to the next um, while you're able to eat and relax and see beautiful sights like it just felt like there was so much time so we really enjoyed cruising it was a very nice break from our normal lives we have four children and life can be extremely busy and so we were really pleasantly surprised by how much we enjoyed cruising and then the fact that it was an Alaska cruise, we love Alaska, so we enjoyed every minute of the views and the ports. We just really had a good time uh, exploring more of our state. One of the biggest questions I got was how much did the cruise cost? I have it here on my computer so that I could give you the exact numbers. Now, I don't know how this compares to what other people paid for the cruise. We purchased the cruise, what we realized was very last minute. Some people had planned their cruises for like, years before and we booked it about a month before we took off if maybe less than a month so i'm not sure how our price compared to other things so for two people for a balcony room we paid 2078 dollars and that included a lot of things when we first started booking it was like 700 dollars each so that 2078 includes all our port fees taxes that is all included that also includes food and basic drinks um, that is included as well so one thing that you could spend a lot of money on is drink packages um, you can have no drink package a basic non-alcoholic and then different tiers of drink packages that include uh, especially coffees alcohols cocktails and such so we chose the non-alcoholic drink package and how much did that cost it was $247.66 for the both of us for the full week. You can buy your drinks a la carte, but we just decided to pay this ahead and then we didn't have to worry about it again. This, so ours included sodas and a couple specialty sodas and a couple mocktails. We did not have bottled water on ours. We did bring water bottles, which was really helpful. So our drink package was $247, which I feel like it's a big upgrade, but we enjoyed having the drink package. Mm -hmm. Gratuity, lots of questions about gratuity. And we didn't really know about this before we went on the ship. They do charge gratuity per day that you're on the ship. This pays for the people that are helping direct you around the ship. This pays for the people that help you at your dinner. Um, it is tipping the people at the bars. So at the end of the trip, all those gratuity fees for all the days that you've been out are charged to your credit card. And for us, it was $17 a day for a total of $188.78. It was $17 a day per person. So about 30 something dollars a day. So that was another $200 added on. We chose to also leave $40 for our room steward. They are included in that, but he was cleaning our room like three times a day. So I think we left him 40 or $60 on the, on the nightstand. So when we booked our cruise, we did the most basic package. There are more premium packages that include the drink packages. They include your gratuity. They include some of the specialty dining options. Uh, we just went with the basic package. So our total for the cruise was 
$2,514.44, and that included our cruise with taxes and fees, the drink package, and gratuity. So $2,500, which we felt like was a really good deal because the food and lodging and getting to all these cities was included. So a few things that we did not pay for, we did not pay for internet, uh, we didn't pay for any specialty drinks, or there's lots of shopping and other types of things you could spend money on on the ship. We just chose not to do those and felt like we didn't miss out. We still had a great time. If you didn't see our food video, there were a couple <laughs> restaurants that charge like $30 per person extra, as well as in the main dining rooms, you could order like extra fancy food. But we felt like the food that they provided was more than enough. And so we didn't pay any extra for those things. Then we have excursions. I'm just gonna go through the list really quick. We did bikes in Skagway. It was $103 for the two bikes. Mine was an e-bike, so it was more expensive than Mark's. And that was $103 for three hours. The train ride, I paid $142 for it because I was able to book before we went. I paid 150 for Mark's ticket. I tried really hard to get two tickets. I called and some I could never get a hold of anybody when I needed to. And um, so we just kind of took our chance and they had plenty of tickets for Mark. So I don't know why it said sold out. It said sold out through the cruise ship. It said sold out through their website, but there were plenty of seats, like not a single car that was full. So, so $292 for the train. <laughs> That was kind of a splurge, but we felt like it was worth it. It was amazing. It was incredible. Watch that video. Watch the White Pass Railroad Skagway video. It was awesome. Alaska excursions can be really expensive. You just kind of have to get that your mind wrapped around that. There are things that you can do for really cheap, but they can be really expensive as well. So there's a huge range. You just have to be careful because some of them can be four, five, six, seven hundred dollars when you start factoring in airplanes and helicopters and things like that. So we actually went on the cheaper end, even though these are not super cheap, they are on the cheaper end. Our car rental in Ketchikan was $120 plus $12 gas. My whale watching tour was $195 plus I gave a $20 tip, so that was $215. Um, I looked at big whale watching boats where you would be with like 50 60 people and they were the same price so i was really happy to just do the smaller local company so our excursions cost 742 dollars then we had our hotel in vancouver plus our plane tickets and a few other food items that we bought along the way there that was an extra thousand dollars that made our grand total for the entire trip four thousand two hundred dollars so while we were cruising, we met a whole variety of folks. And there are some people that were taking it to the extreme and they were doing all their shore excursions, really expensive, big drink packages, buying stuff at the stores on the ship. And then we met a few people that had inside cabins with uh, no windows and didn't have the drink packages and just were very Spartan and they were able to do it you know, for a lot less money. And so really there's a wide spectrum and we were probably somewhere on the lower to middle of that spectrum. One of our viewers asked, can you plan ahead and pay the trip out? So for us, most things were paid for ahead of time. We paid for the cruise ahead of time. We paid for most of our excursions ahead of time. The only thing that we paid for while on the trip were excursions that we needed to buy the tickets right there. So like when we rented the bikes and when we got Mark's train ticket and then the tips at the end, we did not pay those ahead of time. Another viewer asked, are there activities for kids and would it be a good trip for children? <laughs> so we didn't see very many children on the ship. Out of the 3,000 plus guests, only a handful of them were children. And we only saw maybe 10 or 12 children the entire week. So could this be a good cruise for kids? They do have a kids center, you know, broken up by age. They do have activities for the kids to do but it's not necessarily really exciting for kids if they're not into like looking out at the beautiful scenery. There were a lot of days on the ship, so it could get a little bit stir crazy with children, but you know, it just depends. I think our kids would have had a great time. There was plenty for them to do. I think they would have just been all over the ship, 
but I don't know that people cruise princess expect to see a lot of kids. There are other cruise lines where kids sail free, so you would expect to see a lot more kids and kids might more have more fun because they'll have other kids to hang out with. I don't think I saw a single kid our kids age. I saw a couple little kids like stroller age toddling around, but I didn't see any like 10, 12 year olds. I don't think I saw, saw a single one. I don't think I did either. So take yeah. that for what it is. I do have a friend that has sailed several times with Carnival and that, you know, a lot of times kids sail free on that. And so you would have a lot more children and they probably would have more fun. Or of course, Disney cruises. Okay, the next question is, how did you determine which excursions to take in port? On the Princess website, they have a list of a lot of excursions. That is where I started my search, just to kind of see what each port town had to offer. And then I actually would go to the website of that company or find a similar, smaller company to work with. The reason why we did that is because we just wanted to support the local companies if at all possible. <clears throat> a lot of the other small companies, you're gonna get a much closer, intimate experience with probably a local Alaskan guide. If you're on one of these bigger expeditions or bigger excursions, you're gonna have more likely to have people from out of state that are your guides or people that don't are not as knowledgeable and you're not gonna get that kind of one-on-one -on -one or, or small group experience. So some people are afraid to book excursions that are not through the cruise ship. The cruise ship has a guarantee that if you don't make it back, they'll, you know, there's some insurance that they'll get you to the next port and make sure you make it onto the boat. But here's the caveat, you pay a lot of money for that guarantee. I've talked to a number of local providers that don't go through the cruise ship and they all told me that never, this is their bread and butter. They know when to get people back to the ship and they never ever miss the ship. So I wouldn't worry about that. I wouldn't pay the extra premium. I would go and try and get the local companies. You're gonna get better service and uh, just a lot more intimate local feel for your excursion. Mark was talking with one of these local people and he worked with the cruise ships for a while and the cruise ships take a large chunk of money. So he had to hire like 12 employees and take out so many people every single day to make it worthwhile for him. He now just has his own company and he's able to take out groups of like seven to 10 people twice a day and make just as much money as when he was taking out a huge number of people. So it just, like Mark said, it just gives you that more personalized experience and you're getting that local guide because tourism does bring in a lot of outer staters. Like the people driving the tour buses and things are often not from Alaska. And so if you can go with some local people, it can just enrich your experience a lot. So on all the cruise ship websites, you can have, you can look at each port and they're going to have excursions for you. There's different ways you can filter them. You can filter them by kind of type of activity and how much mobility you're able to do. You can filter them by cost, uh, by duration. So there's all different kinds of things that you are going to want to think about and look at, you know, how strong am I? Can I get in and out of a boat? Do I want to fly in a plane? How much do I want to spend? So those are all things that you can consider when you're looking at the type of experiences you want at each port. And the thing is, if you don't have a lot of money to spend, just walking around the city, there is so much to do. Or just spending $50 by going to like a museum or, you know, looking around in the gift shops. Now make sure you get beyond the cruise ship gift shops. Like that front row is premium cruise ship, like all those diamond retailers and things. They board up their doors after the cruise ship season and they leave town. If you get a little bit further back, you'll find the local vendors. They're selling small business stuff. Like they have lots of local crafters that bring in their goods. Get a little bit further away from like the front of the, you know, where all the flashy stuff and the, you'll find some really good things in all of the port towns in Alaska. We really, we, we did a lot of walking and there was a lot of good things to be seen. I did find a YouTube video on all the ports that we stopped at and doing them on a budget. I will link it in the description below because I thought the guy did a really good job explaining some of those things. The next question we got is, are you allowed the same amount of time in each port so that you have time to explore or does the time off the ship vary? It is very important to look at how long your ship is going to be in port and at what time is it going to be in port? If it comes in in the middle of the night and leaves at like 
11 o'clock in the morning, you're not gonna have a lot of time. And from what I understand, not all cruise ship port dockings are created equal. So make sure you take a look at that when you're booking your cruise. Like ours were all really good. They got in early in the morning. We had seven hours in Ketchikan, 12 hours in Skagway and in Juneau more than enough time to explore but you can see that in all of our videos but they do give you enough time in our case they gave us enough time we also got to go through glacier bay not all cruise ships get to do that only two cruise ships a day get to go through there so if that is something that you're interested in make sure you look and see if that's included on the ones that you're looking at we booked that we were excited about that but we were really limited on the week that we could go on the cruise so we really just lucked out we lucked out on the weather we lucked out on all the ports that it went to and everything lined up really really well so we were happy with that the cruise weather was phenomenal it was 70 degrees or warmer and hot for the entire week we were out there which was just amazing we've come home and it hasn't even got up to 70 at all it's, it's been, been in like 50. The, it's been the 50s to 40s at night and uh, we got one or two days in the 60s and so it was amazing weather make sure you book it book your tour when there's a nice weather window <laughs> order up the good weather um, that's just to go into the next question somebody asked when should they come if they want good weather that they don't have to bring warm clothes um, it's never guaranteed. Alaska, like you said, we're in mid-June at this point. We've sailed in mid-May and it hasn't been warm since we got home. Like those were the warmest days that we've had. Anchorage just hasn't gotten that warm yet. You always need to bring layers. Always. In Alaska, there is no guarantee. It's not like other places. In Alaska, the weather can change every day. And so you're always gonna, if you come to Alaska, you always need to bring a rain jacket, a fleece jacket, probably a warm hat and you know, pants and different things like that. If it's sunny and nice, well, that's a bonus. Yeah, you just kind of peel off those layers, maybe bring one pair of shorts, but you'd probably be fine without yeah. that. Um, that was another question that I got a lot. What did we pack that we didn't need and what would, do we wish we had packed? Everything that I packed, including a rain jacket, a warm hat, all that stuff, I used it, even though it didn't rain, it was cold up on deck as we we're driving around and as we we're out looking at the glaciers. So I was glad that I had that windbreaker and the warm jacket and the hat. And... If it's warm like we had, that doesn't really even matter once the ship gets moving. It gets really breezy and cold. And sometimes we were the only people out on deck because we had the right clothing on. People would make comments to us but that's what we love. We love to be outside, so we just dressed for the weather and then went outside. I got a bunch of comments about how much I packed, like I packed way too much. We are really spoiled. Living in Alaska, we have this thing called Club 49 where we get two free bags every time we fly Alaska Airlines. That is why we brought four bags. We could have brought six bags actually because we could have done two bags and our carry-ons. Anyways. <laughs> I packed that much because I could, but would I still pack what I packed? Yes, I just wouldn't have packed as much. I packed two fleece sweatshirts, I would have only packed one. Um, I still would have packed my warm coat, I still would have packed my rain gear, warm hats. I just would have maybe packed less of that because they do have laundry on the ship. So that's an option is to clean those things. But would I have still brought all that stuff? Yes, the only thing that I wish we had brought that I didn't bring was two pairs of binoculars. Mark had his and he shared them with me all the time. You know, there are binoculars, but there were so many things that I would have liked to be looking at the same time he was or he would wanted to look while I was looking. So I would say one pair of binoculars for everybody in your party. Other than that, I feel like we packed really well. Having rain boots was really good for me. That's what I prefer to have on my feet when it is cold out. Wool socks were a must uh, just for being comfortable out on the deck, but you just have to know your activity level. If you're wanting to stay inside all the time, you maybe don't need all that stuff, but you will be more comfortable if you have it. Another question was, can single people cruise without it being weird? Uh, we sat next to several individuals at shared dinner tables that were solo cruisers and it didn't seem weird at all. They were nice people. They, we enjoyed having dinner with them and they had their own unique stories. Um, 
uh, I didn't find it awkward or weird at all. Every day they have an itinerary of activities and on that itinerary, every single day there was multiple kind of meet and greets and mix and mingles for solo travelers. And so the cruise ships are trying to cater to people like that. Uh, there was dancing some nights and other things like that if you wanted to go. And so I think it would be just fine if you were a solo traveler and uh, you'd enjoy it. I did hear that you have to pay a little bit more because you know, you're booking a room by yourself that they would could usually charge two people. You don't pay as much as two people, but you do end up paying a little bit more. But like Mark said, we sat with multiple people that were by themselves. Some people cruising with friends, others were, that were by themselves and ha we're having a great time. Um, the shared dinner tables would make that not feel awkward because they just seat as many people at a table and you're just all talking to each other. So it didn't matter if you were by yourself or with somebody else. So I would highly recommend if you do go by yourself to go into the dining rooms for dinner and sit at a shared table and get to know people. After how much did the cruise cost, the second most common question we got was, would we ever cruise again? Yeah, of course we cruise again. What was there not to like about hanging out with someone you love for seven days and not having to worry about food, about cleaning and seeing cool places every, every other day as we went to different ports? Yeah, I think of course we would. Um, it, I don't think for us it's gonna be something that we do every year all the time but I definitely could see us cruising again and really enjoying it. And the other question that came along with that is would we take the kids? Yes, I think we will take a whole family cruise. I think it would be a lot of fun. It will probably be somewhere warm like the Caribbean. Um, I think a Mediterranean cruise would be really fun for Mark and I to go on. So yes, we would love to cruise again. It really just felt like you were on a floating hotel. Luckily we had really good weather for the sea as well. So. Honestly, I just like sometimes had to remind myself that we were even on a ship. Like looking out a window, I'd be like, oh yeah, we're on a ship. Like when we were in the, um, like the Broadway presentations at night and this big theater, you forgot that you were on a ship. We will definitely consider cruising in the future. We got a few questions about food. We did do a whole food video, but I do have a few questions that I did not hit in that video. One was, are there options for healthy eating on the cruise? I felt like there were lots of healthy options. The buffet always had salad bar, awesome fresh fruit. There were always menu items that were just like sauteed vegetables, chicken breast. So if you have allergies, I'm sure they have things I didn't ever see. I'm, I think you just have to let them know on the app. It, did ask if you had any allergies. So I'm sure there are things and options that they can give you if you have allergies. I did not get extra information on that, but I do remember them asking if you had any allergies. So I know they have to take that into account these days. There are so many people with allergies, but there were lots of healthy options. You could eat as much or as little as you wanted every day. I also felt like the portions in the dining room were actually quite small compared to like what we would get at a regular restaurant where they like fill your entire plate. They were often just a smaller portion. For Mark, he would want to order a couple because they were smaller and he felt like he was left hungry at some points, but I, you didn't have to overeat. Overall, I really enjoyed the food. I thought it was great. I didn't feel like it was exceptional at any one point, but it was good and there was lots of it and it was available and lots of variety. Um, it was not a five-star dining experience, but it would say like a four-star dining and, and lots of it. And it, lots of different things that we could try that I normally would never pay money for, but I really enjoyed trying kind of without that risk of worrying if, if I'm going to like it or not. And so that was really fun and, and exciting. So yeah, we really enjoyed the food. I never was like blown away by it, but it was all really good and I never felt sick from it. It just was... There was a good variety and good options and we really enjoyed it. Another question that we got several times was, did you ever feel bored on the ship? No, there was so much to do. Even on the days when we were at sea and we weren't going to a port, they just packed in all kinds of activities and you, and you really could pick and choose whatever you wanted. There was sporting activities up above deck. There was educational things with a naturalist. They had these Broadway shows. Uh, they have a whole bunch of movies that you can watch on demand at your, in your room. Yeah, 
there were, you know, people could gamble. We're not gamblers, but like, they just was something all the time. Like in the piazza, they had games, they had game shows going on in the Princess Live Theater. You could do as much or as little that you wanted every single day. I read every day. I took a cat nap every single day. There was enough time to shower and change your clothes multiple times to go to different activities. Like there was just plenty of time and I didn't feel bored at all. We had several questions about what you need to prepare to get on your cruise ship. Uh, this cruise went out of Canada, so we had to have passports. Other than that, just planning a few of the excursions, I would say it would be smart to plan some of them before you go, at least have an idea of what you wanna do because it could be kind of overwhelming to get there and not have any idea uh, because there are so many options. Um, you can print out your luggage tags beforehand. We did not, it did, you know, we had to wait in an extra line. Um, customs probably took the longest of anything waiting in line to go through customs. Um, just because there were so many people, there were two cruise ships leaving at the same time. So the line was quite long. Yeah, so those are the things that you need beforehand. A few more things about the cruise ship that people asked, can you hear the engines all the time? Could you hear the engines? Oh, you're right. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, there was a kind of a low hum, but nothing that hurt my ears or anything like that. We were on floor 15, I think. No. Nine. Well, we were on floor, <laughs> sorry, we were on floor nine, and uh, I did I mean, you could just kind of hear this low rumble, but really not that noticeable. And uh, if you were up on the upper deck, you could hear a little bit more noise with kind of outside wind noise and stuff like that, but there was no problem. I mean, holding quiet conversations or anything like that is. That was one really fun thing about the Princess Cruise. There were tons of places to just hang out and play games. They had games available in the library. Um, you, they just had lots of meeting areas. So if you wanted to have a bigger group of like 10 or 12 people meet together, there were plenty of places to meet, chat, talk, eat together, play games together, all those things. So they do a really good job of making sure you have areas to hang out and really I felt like nothing was off limits we could just pretty much just wander you know there were a couple doors that are just for crew but you really can just wander the ship and have a really good time um, the other one was did you feel seasick fortunately we had really good weather and I get sick on small boats or in small airplanes I didn't feel sick at all I like I said I forgot that we were on the ship often I didn't take any Dramamine or any uh, we did see I did see quite a few people with like the patches behind their ears um, if you need that we got some questions about like the social economic and environmental impact that these cruise ships have on these small port towns and what did we think about that did we talk to any locals about it um, you know we've been to several of these towns before and Honestly, they rely on the tourist industry to survive. So yes, you hear grumblings about, oh, the tourists are in or the cruise ships are in, but for the most part, like that's how these cities really thrive is off of the revenue from these cruise ships coming in. So for the most part, I feel like everybody is kind and there are always ways to avoid that area for locals like in Juneau unless you need to go in that little downtown area, you can just kind of skirt around the tourist area where all the cruise ships come in and you're fine. Same thing in Ketchikan. Um, so that's my take on it. Yeah. There clearly are ecological and social impacts with releasing 3,200 guests on multiple ships every day into these small communities. Um, that being said, I think the cruise ships do the best they can to mitigate that and to mitigate, you know, pollution and other types of impacts. And, uh, you know, they seem very clean to the most part. And, you know, there was, you know, we weren't concerned with pollution or other things like that. I don't know. If we haven't done much research into this area, but from what we've experienced, Alaska needs tourism we rely on tourism you know the pandemic was very hard on these towns that didn't have the cruise ships coming in a lot of the small businesses either closed down or really struggled so you know there's pros and cons to all of these kind of things okay two more questions do you have a favorite part of the cruise i 
I think my favorite part was just hanging out and being with you for a whole week hmm, without having any distractions from the kids and just totally unplugging from work and all those things. It was really nice. That was my favorite part. Yeah, that was my favorite part too. Like we love Alaska. We just enjoyed all the cities and seeing all the beautiful sights, but we just really enjoyed reconnecting. Uh, I didn't edit any videos while we were on the ship. Uh, the only thing I did was had to pull some footage off of my uh, cameras onto the computer because I was running out of room. But other than that, we just spent a lot of time together and enjoyed the entire trip. So it was wonderful. Last question, somebody asked, is it worth getting off at Whittier and exploring? The cruise ship that we went on, <laughs> hold on, the cruise ship that we went on had the option to just cruise back down to Vancouver and we met several people that were doing the 14 day thing. So cruise ships in Alaska mostly come to Whittier and then there's another town of Seward. Is it worth getting off and exploring? Um, yes and no. Why did you laugh? Well, I laughed because when we showed up in Whittier, it was driving sheets of rain. <laughs> there was still snow all the way to the ground, and it was just brutal. And then the other thing is Whittier is a funky little town. Almost the entire town of like 150 people live in one giant uh, Le World War II building that's left standing in this giant apartment complex. Other than that, there's not really much there. You have uh, like a fuel farm, a harbor, and uh, a bait, like some bait stores, and this apartment building, and a small school. There's not much there. Beautiful place when it's sunny, but it can be really nasty weather there. So for Whittier, there's, there's a number of things that you can do. They have sea kayaking tours, whale watching, glacier tours. Um, they also have tours that will go through a two and a half mile tunnel into the Anchorage area and take you on tours around. There's a wildlife refuge, there's a ski resort town. So there's a number of things you can do if you want. That are pretty close by. Um, what I would say is if you're coming into Whittier, you're not gonna spend a ton of time in Whittier. You might, there is actually a nice little Airbnb or hotel right there on the water. It's tiny though. Yeah. See, Whittier really just doesn't have the infrastructure like the other towns. Most yeah. people arrive at Whittier, they load on buses or the train, and, move on. and they go into Anchorage or up to Denali National Park. So that's what I would say when you said, yes, is it worth getting off? Yes, it's worth getting off and then exploring like the Anchorage area or going beyond and going to Seward or going north and going up to Denali. I really actually feel sorry when people just get to come to Alaska and they get on an airplane right after they get off their cruise ship and go home because um, like where we live is very different than the Southeast Alaska that you see along the cruise ship. So yes, if you can at all possible, spend a few more days or at least a day exploring Anchorage or the surrounding area, I would highly recommend it. So our Alaska cruise was a wonderful experience. We highly recommend it. Uh, I've heard that it is on the top of a lot of people's bucket list, but it's also on the top of a lot of people's lists that do a lot of cruising. They'll say Alaska cruises are in their top three favorite cruises along with Caribbean and Mediterranean cruises. They seem to just be the best cruises for like first time cruisers because you kind of know what to expect and you get what you expect. They do say about the Alaska cruises, it's the only cruise where the views are better than the brochure and I would agree. Like our videos, I feel like we do a pretty good job of capturing how gorgeous Alaska is, but that little camera just cannot capture how amazing it really is here. I always just say it's like magical because it's something that you have to experience yourself. So for us, we had a fabulous time. I would recommend it if you're interested in doing it. It's a great way to see a large portion of the southeast part of Alaska that you really wouldn't be able to do on your own. Or if you wanted to do it, it would cost much, much more money and the logistics would be really tri tricky having to visit all these different communities. So cruising makes it easy and it's fun and you don't have to worry about any of the hassles. So if you're thinking about it, set a date, do it. You won't regret it. Yeah, we've discussed that over and over. For us to fly to Skagway, Juneau, and Ketchikan, or take a ferry and rent cars, 
would have been ten, twelve thousand dollars to get to experience all the things we did on the cruise. So yes, it is a wonderful way to dip your toe into visiting Alaska. Alaska is huge. You'll probably want to come back and do an interior excursion if you don't have time to do that in association with your cruise because there is so much to see. But uh, that's what we try and share because we love Alaska so much. And we are so grateful to all of you that made this cruise possible. You watching these videos is the motivation we needed to test out a cruise ourselves so that we could give tips to all of you. Otherwise, this wasn't really on our list of things to do, but we are so, so glad that we did it. Thank you so much for watching. We will see you again real soon for more of This Alaska Life.